my real wonderful lawn. I always start off my talks talking about the benefits of having a fine lawn, and it's important uh, that we take care of our lawns, especially in the suburban areas. Not so much maybe in the urban areas because there's plenty of buffer between you and the streams and uh, and things as long as you're not uh, uh, you don't have the cows going through the screen the, the streams and things but uh, um, uh, it's important that in the suburban areas that we really uh, 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 take care of our lawn so that the, the dirt doesn't erode away uh, and we get a lot of benefit uh, from our uh, applications first of all taking care of the lawn uh, lawn is, is important erosion control. If you didn't have lawn around your house, uh, you'd have dirt, and that uh, you don't want the dirt to erode. That's where a lot of your uh, 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 pollution actually comes from. Uh, uh, grass actually gives a cooling effect in the summertime, uh, and then uh, it also helps the water quality uh, and purification. It's a carbon sink, and it absorbs carbon dioxide. It releases oxygen. It's going to increase your property value, and uh, you maintain it for pest control, and, and it improves the structure. So the most important ones there are the top four, I think, and especially the, the erosion control and water quality are important for um, our natural areas. You know, it, here it is. Um, that uh, thick root system, there's 185 million to 49 billion shoots of grass per acre, and that's what makes it uh, such an efficient runoff and, and erosion preventer. Um, uh, so uh, it, it's important that in uh, our suburban areas where we have so much uh, impervious surfaces, the streets and the sidewalks, uh, where water is allowed to just uh, uh, run off down the storm drain, uh, that we have pervious areas like lawn uh, where the water can actually soak in and, and it uh, uh, impedes the movement of that water out there. Okay, uh, I love this picture. This is an aerial picture of a neighborhood in Baltimore, and uh, you can see what's uh, uh, happening. You know, this guy's doing pretty good. You know, he might even have a lawn care company. It's pretty straight, but there's still, you know, some areas where they might have skipped with the spreader. Um, uh, but you can see what happens when uh, you use a broadcast spreader here that's not quite working right. Uh, and then down here, this is definitely a guy using a drop spreader and not overlapping. But, you know, if, if uh, uh, a fertilizer moved off of turf areas like some people believe that it does, you wouldn't see that striping. Uh, the, the lawn, but it would pretty much leach and, and kind of leach together and uh, uh, it, it wouldn't stripe like that. So this picture is testament that uh, turf grass roots do what they're supposed to do. And as long as you get it on the lawn and you keep it off the street and the sidewalk, uh, putting it on the street and the sidewalk allows it to wash down uh, and it'll go right into that storm drain, okay? Uh, but as long as you keep it on the lawn, it's going to stay put where it's supposed to be and be taken up by the grass, okay? Um, so when you think about your neighborhood and your drainage of your neighborhood, this is what most people are most concerned about, and that's the stormwater runoff. Uh, and, and it's important that we really do think about where our stormwater goes. Uh, the problem with the Anacostia River in southeast D.C. is that most of the storm drains go right directly into the river. Uh, and we've learned from that, but still we, we, we continue to have a problem uh, with uh, runoff of streets and, and, uh, uh, and of uh, hard surfaces uh, because you start to get that volume of water uh, if it runs in an area that can erode, it, it causes problems. So most of our neighborhoods down here in Charles County and in the Southern Maryland area uh, pretty much are going to uh, run off to some type of sediment pond. Uh, and, and that's a pretty good thing. However, it's not foolproof. And we need to be uh, aware of what happens when it rains uh, in our neighborhoods. Okay. Now, this picture is really uh, a good one because uh, it really depicts what happens when 
your lawn is neglected. Uh, the two nutrients that your lawn needs the most are uh, the ones that are blamed for the problem in the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, nitrogen is the first one and that's the nutrient that your lawn needs the most. Uh, the second one is phosphorus and uh, they're represented on your fertilizer bag as the first number on the fertilizer bag and as the second number. Um, and uh, um, it, it's important to note that phosphorus is very tightly bound to the soil. So that means by being bound to the soil, you're not going to lose phosphorus unless you lose soil. And this picture really shows a lawn that has no root system. Uh, it actually has too many trees in the back, so it's hard to get a lawn to grow, I guess, if, if they've tried. Um, uh, but the, the soil is just eroding completely off of there. And uh, a lawn that uh, like this is going to lose tons, uh, absolutely tons of uh, uh, phosphorus that are going to go down the storm drain and eventually make its way uh, into uh, the, the water system and into the Chesapeake Bay. Whereas if you had a good root system, uh, it's proven fact that if you control erosion, you control that phosphorus from running off. And uh, it's so, you know, it's the, the uh, message here is that you need to fertilize your lawn good enough so that you're going to hold the soil and that you're not losing the soil to erosion. All right, so on the other side, it, it, it's important to point out that uh, if you are going to uh, keep a good lawn uh, and if you want a immaculate lawn during the hard, hard times of the summertime when we're seeing uh, outbreaks of disease and it's dry and uh, you know, the lawn's going through a lot of stress, that you're going to need to do some additional inputs. Uh, this is a, a, a very common summertime disease called brown patch, uh, and it, it takes a. It, it needs to be said that it takes a very long time uh, for brown patch to actually get down into the crown and into the roots of the plants, uh, where it can do permanent damage and kill the lawn. Okay, we are going to kill the lawn worse by our mowing practices uh, rather than brown patch if you have a problem with brown patch in the summertime. Uh, now, um, uh, uh, once again, this uh, if, you, if you've ever seen the disease triangle, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, tri the triangle says that you have to have a host, uh, you have to have a pathogen, and you have to have the proper weather. Well, the proper weather for brown patch to develop is uh, those very hot, humid uh, uh, days where it just seems like things don't dry out. Uh, and the reason that uh, it likes that weather is because the pathogen that causes these brown spots, it, 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 the, the grass just doesn't, it loves when the grass doesn't dry out. Uh, so it has plenty of time to infect and cause these brown areas. So. Uh, uh, cultural practices that need to be done here uh, probably uh, turn off the sprinkler system so much. Uh, I think uh, uh, this is a guy that had a sprinkler system. He's watering at night, uh, watering shallow uh, in the summertime. Uh, we're going to talk more about how to water. And, you know, if you're watering at night, that lawn stays wet all night long and allows the pathogen to uh, um, uh, take hold. Now. Uh, if you don't water, does, am I telling you not to water? No, not really. Uh, it depends on what you want your lawn to look like in the summertime as to how much you're going to water the lawn. Uh, you can let the lawn go into a little bit of dormancy, but if you let it go into dormancy in the summertime, it's going to be brown. Okay. Also, uh, if you're watering improperly, uh, diseases like brown patch may be worse. But the key here is that you get your lawn thick and healthy enough so that if you do have a problem like this, uh, uh, that you can, for the most part, get it through the summer and do a minimal amount of uh, 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 seeding or whatever in the fall uh, to bring uh, the lawn back and make sure that the lawn recovers with fertilization and uh, any seeding that you need to do. Okay, Or uh, you keep the sprinkler running throughout the summertime and you water properly and you uh, uh, apply fungicide to the lawn. Uh, to abate the uh, um, disease problems. So our fungicide program 
works fairly good, uh, and uh, uh, it really uh, it really stops the brown blighting that happens uh, as a result of brown patch. So, uh, once again, moral of the story: if you're going to have a perfect lawn in the summertime, there's going to be additional inputs that you're going to need to put into it uh, to keep in that way uh, the way uh, if that's your expectation for the summer. Not impossible, but uh, you know, expect that. My real wonderful lawn.